Hey guys, if you were watching this video, you probably encountered Voice Meter, and I'm not surprised. It's a free app, and it's also recommended by a lot of content creators and myself for when we want a software solution for equalization. However, while Voice Meter is incredibly popular and powerful, there are problems with it. First of all, it's hard to set up, and second, it can be quite buggy. So for today's video, we're going to be talking all about Voice Meter. In the first section of the video, I'm going to be talking about how to set it up to make sure that it's connected to your mic and also outputting to the right place. We're also going to talk about equalization. I'm going to spend a bit more time on the theory behind all of those knobs and frequency ranges, etc., etc., to make sure that your mixing is actually perfect for your microphone and your voice. We're also going to be talking about my general guidelines and tips for using voice meter. Let's get it started. All right, here we are in my desktop view. And as you can see, voice meter is loaded up. But before we start configuring, we actually need another software and it's called VB Cable. Now, VB Cable is also made by the same people who made Voice Meter, and it's actually really, really important. So imagine if you bought a audio interface. Let's say you're using your BM800 with an XLR to 3.5 millimeter jack, and it's plugged straight to the PC. What you will need to buy is another XLR to XLR cable so that your mic is plugged into the interface, and then use your XLR cable to 3.5 millimeter to connect it to your PC. Now, VB Cable Cable is similar to that. It gives you another cable, so to speak, so that voice meter can plug into your different types of software and it's not directly outputting to your headset. Now, the download link will be in the description below. Make sure that when you install it, you install it at administrator mode or else you won't be able to install it. And then make sure to restart your PC because you'll need to have the drivers load up when you start the PC up. Now that you've restarted your PC after installing VB Cable, it's now time to configure voice meter. First thing that you need to do is click hardware input and locate your microphone. If you don't know which one of those was your microphone, go to sound settings and then go to sound control panel and go to recording. And as you can see, there are two devices with green bars appearing. The first one is from my capture card. It's the audio coming from my camera. And the second one is coming from my lavalier microphone. In our case, we need our lavalier microphone. So it's called the Realtek High Definition Audio. So since we've located that, click hardware input and then click it. Now, the second part is where people get confused a lot. And you have to go to hardware out and click the VB audio cable input. Now, don't get confused. You may be looking for VB cable output. However, the way that you need to think about it is that it's the digital input to your other software that you're gonna be using voice meter on. So make sure it's there. I notice also that people use their output channel for this, for example, their speakers or their headsets. Now, the problem with this is if your headphones are connected straight into your computer and you don't have low latency monitoring, you're gonna hear a half second delay and it's gonna be very bothersome. Also, if your speakers are loud enough, the microphone will be picking it up and you're gonna get that feedback. So make sure that you just use the VB cable input because it's the most convenient one. If you've configured it properly, then these bars should be showing up. It's that straightforward, guys. I hope this was able to help you guys when it comes to configuring the inputs and the outputs here in Voice Meter. Now that we've set it up, let's also talk about how to use it in the different software. So the first thing that I'm gonna be teaching you is how to connect it to OBS. I know a lot of you that watch me are streamers and also content creators that use OBS for their content. So we're gonna start with OBS. It's actually quite straightforward. Just go to audio mixer, right click this bar on mic slash auxiliary, go to properties, and then select cable output. There you go. As you can probably hear, my voice now sounds different because it's now being treated by the voice meter post-processing. It's that simple. So the signal chain for OBS is basically your microphone, voice meter, and then it will go to your VB cable input and then you are connected to OBS through the VB cable output. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna teach you is how to connect it to your Discord. By the way, what you're seeing here right now is my Discord server. Make sure that you join it. The link will be down below and make sure that you head on over to stream support and ask your questions there. Please don't DM me. The reason why I prefer that people send a message on stream support is that so people can back read and learn from the questions that have been asked before. So let 
me know if you need more help here at Stream Support. To connect your voice meter to Discord, you need to go to user settings, you need to go to voice and video, and then make sure that your input device is the same thing, cable output, and pretty much that's it. You can actually start using it already, and to test it, just go to a voice channel, let's go to my streaming channel, and as you can see, the green part here is glowing, so it means that it's picking an audio signal up. Now the next thing that we're going to be talking about is Zoom. I know this is a popular software for online class and meetings so you may want to be using the voice meter for your zoom to make yourself have more presence first thing that you need to do is click this gear button and then go to audio and then choose cable output just like we did on discord and obs if you've connected it properly then you're gonna see the input here have some sort of movement as you can see while i'm talking hello there is a blue bar here it means that it is working and it's basically that simple now the next question that i keep getting asked is if you're going to be using voice meter as an input to your different types of software do you need it on all the time and the answer is yes what i would recommend if you are going to be using voice meter across different software so that it doesn't bother you make sure you click either this one the system tray option or click the show app on startup another troubleshooting tip that i'm going to give you is that if you experience times where voice meter stops picking up your voice just restart it just click the x button and if you have it minimized on the tray just right click that icon and then exit it and then start it up again it's going to work most of the time so what's up guys and we're back again hold up hold up jokes aside we've reached the most important part of the video the part where we learn how to equalize your voice now this section will be quite long but i would encourage you to watch this until the end first of all it's very important to be able to eq your own voice your microphone because our voices and microphones are incredibly different and also copying settings will not be the best for your voice in the long term make sure to watch this entire section so that when you change your microphone you will be able to take your skills with you even if you upgrade your gear we are also going to do some sound tests with the bm800 with voice meter to show you guys how it can sound like with just phantom power and this microphone with software equalization it's going to blow your mind before we get started let's talk about some of the changes that you're seeing first of all i'm sorry for my quick costume change i've had to reshoot this section twice so really sorry about that there's a lot of content here and i wanted to make sure that i was clear in my explanation and that you can understand the technical portion of this video i'm also using the bm800 here you go the legendary bm800 microphone for beginners and it's plugged straight into my audio interface with 48 volts phantom power and this audio interface is plugged into my pc this is not eq'd so that we can get the default sound of the microphone and use that as a starting point for our equalization the second thing is that we can see the software here. It's called Spectralissimi. You can find this from the people who created Voice Meter and VB Cable. It will help us prioritize the different types of frequencies for when we start equalizing our voice. I will leave the download link on the description below on where you can find this software. You can also see the 15 band parametric equalizer. It's this one the window that I'm dragging around. The way to get to this is you click menu and then you click run 15 bands graphic equalizer. And then this window should pop up. All right, going back to Spectralissimi, the first thing that we need to talk about is how to read it. The numbers on the side are just basically levels showing you how loud the frequencies that are being picked up from the microphone. And these numbers are not that important compared to the ones at the bottom. The bottom numbers are the most important and it actually shows you the different frequencies that your mic is picking up. And if you've been playing around with the equalizer or have a pricey speaker setup i am sure you've heard the concept of lows middles and highs and we can illustrate the audio spectrum here on this window lows would be frequencies below around 300 so these are this is the low section so from around here to here this is most generally accepted as the low frequency the mids are actually from around 300 to 2500 and the highs are the frequencies from 2000 hertz and above first on the lows this makes your voice more full body or fuller when you increase it 
what you're hearing now is a bass boosted or low boosted version of my voice as you can hear it gives a bit of oomph in my voice this is what happens when you boost the bass frequencies or the low frequencies this gives you more presence if your mic is focused on the mid to high ranges However, the danger here is that too much lows will make your voice sound muddy and it will also create this feeling of having some sort of sound pressure thing pressing into your eardrums. So just be careful when you're boosting this section of the frequencies. If you cut this frequency though, you will hear my voice is thinner. It doesn't sound as full as before. My general tip for this frequency is don't add too much to it or don't cut too much into it. If you add too much, it will sound harsh to the ears and it will sound as if you are over compensating for your high voice if your voice is naturally low be careful about adding more to this and if your voice is also generally higher try not to overcompensate because it will just sound fake second on the mids if i increase it like i'm increasing now you're gonna hear like it's coming from a low quality speaker that's actually what it's going to start emphasizing. It sounds more boxy. However, if I continue to remove it like so, you're gonna hear that my voice is much fuller because you're gonna be hearing a lot more of that bass coming out. However, you're doing this at the cost of removing a lot of details from your voice. Finally, on the highs, this covers the most important frequencies for human hearing, which is called sibilance. And it's generally between around 2000 to 10,000 Hertz, depending on the voice. If I I increase this frequency you're gonna hear that my voice is going to start to be uh, sounding a bit more annoying so you have to be very careful when you're increasing this however if I extremely remove these frequencies you're gonna hear that my voice is actually sounding muffled like something is covering it this just goes to show how important this range is for our hearing so make sure that you don't cut this section too much and be careful about adding too much now the highs also add a characteristic of airiness so I'm gonna increase the high range as well and increase the sibilant frequencies a little bit. As you can hear, my voice sounds airier. You know, it sounds more clear, bright, and brilliant and it's very pleasant to the ears. But make sure you don't overdrive and over increase these frequencies because you're gonna start to hear sibilance creeping in. Now that you know about the frequency range, let's talk about how to actually EQ your voice. The first thing that I like to do is I speak into the mic regularly and I also do tests like E, U, E. And as you can see, the mic is actually strong at certain frequencies like so E. And you should also be able to see that there are valleys in between the frequencies. E. Now, this is what you want to do. You want to avoid the frequencies where your mic is actually really strong at. So as you can see, just to point things out, this, the mic is actually strong in these frequencies, but it's actually pretty weak on these frequencies, right? So I will make sure to avoid the frequencies where my microphone is already picking it up strongly and just focus on the valleys when I want to boost something. I also will want to cut certain frequencies if, for example, my voice is too sibilant based on the microphone that I'm using. I will also add cuts there. So basically, Basically, that's how you use this tool. Now, this tool actually helps you prioritize the frequencies instead of just relying on your ears the whole time. For this part, I would actually recommend using headphones so that you can EQ your voice accurately. Now, the first thing that I like to do is to speak into the microphone and see where the microphone is strongest in terms of frequencies. As you can see, there are certain peaks here and the microphone is generally picking up a lot of frequencies on these sections. And as you are noticing the peaks, you will also see the valleys in between them. Them, and it can point out that certain frequencies are picked up less by the microphone and that's where you will want to focus your energy so my general tip is that if there are frequencies that are peaks I would either avoid them or introducing a cut in case for example my voice is becoming too sibilant and for the valleys those are what I will prioritize for actually boosting here on the equalizer the process is simple let's go section by section so remember when I told you the low frequency is actually at 300 below so let's start boosting some frequencies I can see right now that the 60 to 100 frequency is actually kind of low so I will try to increase those sections I will just add a bit more here but I will kind of avoid the 25 Hertz frequency because it can add a lot of harshness to your voice and that's what you're hearing right now once you've been able to tweak one section what I would recommend is record your voice and then listen to it and if you're happy with it then keep that setting if you're not happy with it then 
tweak that setting some more. Then go to the next section. So as you can see, there's a valley between probably around 300 to 400 range. So I would increase that just a bit here at the 400 here and then just a bit here in the 250 because it's already very strong at the 250 frequency range so let's increase that a bit and then i'll go now to the highs and then as you can see the 16,000 hertz is pretty low so i'm gonna boost that by a lot and i'm also gonna add to the 10,000 frequency because you can see here it is actually pretty low here now after this i would actually record my voice listen to it for a few seconds and then make some adjustments and you just have to keep repeating that process until you're happy with the sound of your equalization. First off, we are using my Procaster, the microphone that I use on a daily basis. I don't have equalization on it, but it does have a noise gate on and some mild compression. The reason why I'm starting with this is because I want you guys to hear how good the BM800 can sound like when you EQ it properly. Once again, mic test, mic test, one, two, three. This is the Rode Procaster that I use on a daily basis. Now what you're hearing is the default sound of the BM800. I've said this in videos before, but the BM800 sounds like a megaphone when you're speaking into it. Out of the box, since this is a cheap mic, it's to be expected that it doesn't sound great. But you can really do a lot with this microphone if you EQ this properly. By the way, if you're enjoying the content that I have here, please make sure to consider hitting that subscribe button and also that notification bell so that you can actually get notified when I post new videos like these. Also, leave a like and a comment down below if you actually received help from your voice meter problems and leave a dislike if it did not help you. Mic test, one, two, three. Once again, this is the sound from the default BM800. Hey guys, and now what you're hearing are my custom EQ settings for my voice and the BM800. And as you can hear, it actually can compare with the Rode Procast default tone and I do think that this sounds quite a bit better than the Rode Procaster if it is not EQ'd. This just goes to show that the BM800 while a cheap microphone is a powerhouse depending on how you EQ it so make sure to spend the time to EQ your microphone. By the way if you want to use my settings here on screen you can see it here. I will be putting a link where you can download the file however I would encourage you guys to EQ your own voice because our voices and microphone setups are are completely different from each other and that's very important for you to get a custom mix for your own voice but if you just want to get some inspiration and just want to test different settings out you can use my file as a starting point by the way if you're enjoying my voice and also want to hang out with me go to twitch.tv slash where i stream every monday wednesday thursday and saturday we talk about a lot of stuff there including audio tips and streaming tips and if you want to hear more of my voice and just hang out that's the place to find me now that you know how to EQ, I'm going to give you additional tips that can potentially help you. My first tip is that please spend one to three hours mixing your voice. If you just copy your settings, you may not find the ideal setting for your voice because our mic setups and also our voices are incredibly different. So while I will give you the location of the file for my own settings right now, I would encourage you to really sit down and mix your voice until you are happy with the sound of your voice. My second tip is to make sure that you remove the equalization from your headphones. If you're using studio reference headphones like I do, it's better because you can actually EQ your voice accurately. However, most of you will likely have gaming headphones and most manufacturers will add different presets like bass boosted, treble boosted, or mids boosted. And what that will do is actually add a bit of difference in terms of subjectivity. So let's take for example the bass boosted scenario. If you're using bass boosted headphones, you may be encouraged to actually remove or cut the low end frequencies. And what will happen is that if there is someone listening to your stream where they're not wearing bass boosted headphones then your voice will sound thin to them so it's not going to be an ideal listening experience so try as much as possible if you have studio headphones great but if you have gaming headphones remove the equalization from that when you are eqing Finally, try to ask other people to review your sound samples. Sometimes we can be very biased with our own sound settings and configurations and other people might not actually find it pleasant. So having a friend or a viewer or even a family member listen to your voice when it's EQ'd will make a big difference for your audience. So I hope that was useful. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like and also let me know how it helped you solve your voice meter problems. 
If you're enjoying this content and want more education videos about streaming as well as audio stuff, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and notification bell. I'm also streaming every Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday. You can find me at twitch.tv slash We have a lot of fun there. And if you need more help and you wanna chat with other streamers or myself, make sure you go to my Discord channel, link down below. Please don't send me a DM directly. Please put your questions at the stream support channel. My name is Norkla, lahat tayo angat, all will rise.